Welcome back, Joystick Justice League, to the final part of the debut episode of JJL Live. I'm Mike Frusios. This is my new weekly news roundup that I do on the weekends after all the major news is dropped from Monday to Friday. I'm going to dedicate myself to, to putting in one episode a week. Okay, so that's my commitment I'm going to try to make to you now that I've broken that, broken through like the, that first hurdle of pressing record, getting my confidence back, and doing a show. I feel like I can do an audio podcast once a week. So that'll be the goal. Round up the headlines, record on the weekend, get it out. So let's finish it up. Uh, this ran a bit longer, so I, was, I wanted to devote a little bit more time to third-party news, which is going to be this last segment. Um, so I've still got about you know five, six minutes left. Let's uh, talk a little bit about BlizzCon, which happened last week. BlizzCon 2014 happened. And, you know, again, this isn't exactly fresh news, but there, you know, I do want to talk a little bit about it um, from the stance of a console gamer. Now, there's some really exciting stuff on the horizon, and, and I know that Blizzard really takes the console market seriously because I did have the fortune to pick up Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls Ultimate Evil Edition for the PS4 this year, and it's definitely one of my top 10 games of the year. Just polished. I hadn't even played Diablo 3 until this year. I held out because I knew when the PS4 was announced, Diablo 3 was also announced, and I knew that it was probably something worth waiting for. So I held out this whole time, and I, needless to say, I was I was far from disappointed. I was actually I exceeded my expectations of what to expect from a PC port, kind of in the same way as when XCOM was quote unquote dumbed down for consoles. And actually, I think that actually took. RTS is in the next logical step. We'll talk about that some other time. Point is, is that I watched, I'm not even a huge Blizzard fanboy. I, I, people who know me know I'm not like a huge PC gamer. I still follow it out of interest, but I don't have the rig to really run a lot of games at the requirements I want to run. But anyway, I watched the whole uh, 45 minute long opening ceremonies for BlizzCon, which started off a little controversially when Mike Morhaime uh, talked about uh, harassment in the game industry over the last two months. Didn't really mention Gamergate specifically, but Jeff Keighley kind of put some words in his mouth and he was kind of, you know, held it hostage. I'm not really giving any new information. Monday Matt has a good video about that. You can check it out. But anyway, getting all that stuff out of the side, we got back to the games. And, you know, for anybody who's a fan of Blizzard, they hit all the major cylinders, you know. Expansion for World of Warcraft, uh, expansion for Hearthstone, um, updates on uh, the MOBA Heroes of the Storm, which is basically a competitor to Valve's Dota 2, Defense of the Agents 2, and Riot Games' League of Legends, which are both massive games, but you know, when you've got the Blizzard stamp on it and you're using icons of the World of Warcraft franchise, it could be a serious contender. Um, also, big announcement, StarCraft 2 uh, Legacy of the Void. Now, this is one I really want to talk about from a console perspective because it's interesting that they're making this a standalone game. Okay, It's very interesting that you don't have to buy the first two games, which were uh, Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm, to actually play this. And, and they'll probably have some novel way of getting you caught up on what's been happening in the trilogy. But you, you can buy this game, and they say, and enjoy it in its entirety without even having played it. This is, try to, this is to try to introduce new players into the StarCraft franchise. And what I'm hoping is that this may eventually lead to some kind of uh, tune for console StarCraft experience. Like, I, I, I really see now that... PS, the PS4 and the Xbox One can handle these online experiences as shown by how successful Destiny worked as an MMO. You know, love or hate the game, it worked. You know, most of the time, you know, it still works very well. And uh, I think that they can start bringing more PC experiences to the consoles. I would love to see something like StarCraft 2 show up on next-gen consoles. I think that would just make them, they'll, them sell more. And especially the people who are on the fence, like myself, about buying something like a Steam box or committing to upgrading my graphics card when I know that said graphics card would be obsolete in like three to six months. So anyway, a lot of fun stuff on the horizon, but what really got people stoked at the conference was the reveal of the next IP, which is Overwatch. 17 years in the making, Blizzard now having conquered MMOs and trying to conquer MOBAs and card battling games and you name it, is getting into the first person competitive shooter arena, squad based shooter to be more precise, and to be more even more precise, really the next evolution of games like Team Fortress, down to like the cartoony Pixar style of the graphics, the over-the-top weapons, the characters. I mean, we're talking a lot of classes. I mean, Team Fortress had like, what, maybe five, six classes. I know I'm gonna get torn apart for not getting my numbers right, but it, it, it had a good number of classes, whereas this, I'm looking at my list here. 
of things I took in from that from that gameplay video, we've got we we got teleporters, we've got classes with jetpacks, turrets, wall climbing classes like Titanfall style, ex explosive arrows, akimbo guns, heavy melee gadgets, heavy weapons, robot that transforms into a sentry gun. This is all stuff I wrote down. Angel wings, grapple slash sniper, magic attacks, giant lightning shield hammer. Okay, so um, this is going to beta really soon. This isn't something that's on the horizon for like the end of 2015. Well, I mean, retail it will be, but we're going to get a taste of it much sooner than we think. And what's awesome is that I got on that boat and signed up for the beta. So hopefully, if my calculations are correct, I think to get interest in this game, Blizzard is going to make this viable on even like the most moderate gaming PC platforms like my own, which only has like what, 500 gigs, uh, 500 megs of RAM. It's, it's ridiculous. It's stupid. I can run Team Fortress 2 and, and Counter-Strike, but that's about it. I can't run any current gen PC games, but this one, I looked at the graphical style and if I can run this at 60 frames, it may be worth, if I can get my hands on it, doing a future episode. So I'm going to be following Overwatch. This is it's not exactly like a game changer that I was thinking it might be, but it's got it's 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 knowing Blizzard and and their quality control and their commitment to their consumers, my expectations are high, and we'll be tracking this game throughout the weeks as more gets revealed about it and we get closer to the beta. We've pretty much run out of time already. Uh, I wanted to talk about um, uh, something else about Dennis Diak's uh, return with Shadow of the Immortals. Uh, sorry, Shadow of the Eternals is actually back on. We're going to bump that maybe to next week. And um, also, just one quick thing, GTA 5 is coming out for PS4 and Xbox One on the 18th. You can watch me stream it uh, from the 18th and beyond on twitch.tv forward slash 24bayheroes. That's my gaming channel on Twitch. I'll be streaming that uh, from launch day onwards. But I was on the fence about GTA 5 because obviously so little was being revealed about it. But man, if you've seen the first person trailer, bang, there it is. Like the reason to even, re like the whole reason I was gonna buy GTA 5 again, even though I've already beaten it and I've already put in like so many hours of the online, was because the online was so hit or miss on the PS3. I wanted to play more of it and I got sick of getting kicked out of the game and having to reload the game. I'm hoping that the online's gonna be better. And I, and I already sense it's going to be because they've promised 30 player matches, which means that they're probably feeling pretty confident about the way that especially the PS4 can now handle the online nature of this very ambitious game. But just the fact that you can play the whole game in down the sights, cover based first person with these new enhanced graphics is just a game changer to me. Like that's just a new way of playing the game. It's like a new way of looking at it, new way of strategizing it. So I'm really excited. I hope you are too. I'm gonna be playing it on Twitch. That's it, man. That's it. That's all I can talk about. There's so much more I didn't get to talk about this week, but there's always next week and always the new headlines that are going to be coming out. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Hope you enjoyed the uh, the new direction of the Joystick Justice League and, and kind of like how it center out, centers around this show and with specialty shows. So I'm Mike Frucios doing this solo now. Just me, a microphone, some headlines, some commentary, some wits, a little bit of cynicism, but always truth, transparency, and respect. So, again, stop hating on Gamergate. Get your fa get your facts straight. Keep things credible, people. And for the God's sake, just just love what you do. Love the games. I'm getting all preachy now. I gotta stop this. So uh, we'll see you again next week, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Mike Frusios, Joystick Justice League. Out. Peace and game on.